this is our repair, replace, and revive referendum, sort of a different three R's. Instead of reading, writing, arithmetic, it's repair, replace, revive. And laughing at me. <laughs> and some, some of the background for the referendum projects, which I believe Mr. Wozni is going to talk about, I just wanted to, or he put up that these are the, the age of our schools, anywhere from 21 years, which is Auton Road, they're the baby of the community, to 70 years old of Hillsborough Elementary School. And so as he goes through the presentation and then Mr. Mahmood closes it at the end, anything that comes up, any questions you have, you can call us, you can reach out, the website is there for information, come out and see us and we're happy to talk about it. So with that, Mr. Wozni. And please be sure to take a look at the posters as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Antunes, and good evening. I want to introduce a couple, introduce a couple people with me tonight. We have Jamie Hunter and Brian Donnelly. Um, they'll be at the forum on Wednesday night. Lisa Garb's also here, your bond counsel. She's gonna speak about the tax impact portion of the presentation. Um, and as I mentioned, Jamie and, and Brian will be in the district on Wednesday. So uh, a little bit of background, uh, as Dr. Antunes mentioned, the, the schools are old. You've been maintaining them uh, for the past 70 years. Um, in addition to these ages, some of the schools have been added on to over the years. And the reason that's important is because um, they're almost buildings built on top of buildings or next to buildings. So you've got different systems that are different vintages. So you, you may have heard that you, know, you replaced a roof section or you did some mechanical work in the past over the years and you might be wondering why we're still doing that. It could be that just a certain portion of the building was worked on at that time uh, because the, uh, you know, some of the more recent additions are only 40 years old or 20 years old. But there's been no new construction in the district uh, since Auton Road and a few additions uh, 21 years ago. So, uh, so uh, on the next slide, we talk about uh, where, how we got to the point where we're at. Uh, there was a facility condition assessment prepared by Aramac back in February of 2018. We were brought on as district architects and engineers in June of 2018, and we did an assessment of that report. Basically, we validated the information in that report. Uh, there was also a threat and vulnerability assessment prepared by the local and state law enforcement officials in October of 2018. And then from that time on, we uh, met with the Ops Committee, and uh, we, we prioritized these projects. Uh, we tried to pare down the cost. Uh, we, we tried to um, you know, make sure that we were including in a, a possible referendum just projects that were eligible for the state aid. And after all these discussions, the, the conclusion was, which is something that we see with all our school clients, is that um, you have to do more than just maintain the buildings through your annual maintenance budgets. At some point, you, you, you have to have a larger referendum to tackle these large projects because there's just not enough money in a typical school annual budget to fully maintain the buildings over a period of time. So we see our clients every 20 years or so having a referendum just to maintain, tackle the large roof projects, uh, mechanical issues, and, and things that um, just can't be handled on an annual basis. And I do want to emphasize that uh, all this work is work to the existing school buildings. There's no new construction as part of this referendum. Um, no work at board offices, no work at the buildings of grounds building, no ball fields. This is all health and safety work. It's all 100% eligible for state funding because the state deems this as all very necessary work to be done. So on the next slide, uh, we broke the projects down into uh, various categories uh, depending on building systems, starting with mechanical. And, and again, there has been work mechanically in the district over the years, um, but there are a lot of components to mechanical systems. You've got the, the boiler plant, and in some cases, for example, Amsterdam, even though it's one of the newer buildings, those boilers are reaching their useful life expectancy and they need to be replaced. Um, there are terminal units like the one photograph in the top that's at Woodfern. That's original to the construction of the building. These unit ventilators are at the point where they need to be replaced. The parts are no longer available. Um, the um, 
energy efficiency codes have changed, the uh, indoor air quality codes have changed for ventilation. So uh, various code requirements make it necessary to uh, replace this equipment when it gets, um, gets this old. So we've got uh, water piping, um, and again, the various components of a mechanical system. You've got the terminal units, which are located in every, every room. You've got the piping that reaches to those units from the boilers. And then you have controls. So a lot of the work that we're doing is controls so that the, the, uh, all the, this equipment uh, that's going in is uh, being used at the proper times, that it's uh, energy efficient and um, controlled, you know, so it's uh, staying energy efficient. On the next slide, we've got electrical work. Uh, you know, these are emergency lighting issues and exit signs. And again, they're, they're just gradually, um, you know, getting old over the years. And these are the types of, you know, key systems that you don't want to wait until they fail. So we're, we're making recommendations that they're replaced in schools. On the next slide, we've got exterior work. Again, a lot of the, the masonry original to the construction of the buildings. You've got uh, caulk joints that are failing that need to be re -caulked. You've got masonry that needs to be repointed. EFIS, which is uh, exterior insulating and finishing system. It's basically a, a synthetic stucco system. It's on this building. It's on a couple other buildings. Um, it's gotten damaged over the years. Lacrosse balls are, you know, something that we see at a lot of school districts. They um, they hit the building, they put pockmarks in it, and it, you know, besides, it's not just an aesthetic issue, but it allows water infiltration through those, those openings, and as soon as water gets in, hits that insulation that's behind that exterior uh, hard coat, um, you, you have moisture. And then once you have moisture in there, you've got the, you know, potential for, for mold inside the building. So all this exterior work is very important. The next slide, we cover interior work. Um, picture on the upper left-hand corner is at Hillsborough Elementary School. That is the, the floor of the boiler room. There's a fan room below that floor that uh, no longer works as a fan room, but uh, structurally this is something that needs to be taken care of. Uh, so that's in the scope of work. We've got a lot of ceiling systems that, are, that need to be replaced, interior doors that need to be replaced, toilet partitions. Uh, we've got floor tile, so there's a whole host of interior projects that are included in the referendum. The next slide, we have roofs. And again, some of the roofs have been replaced over the years, some have been repaired. Um, we're only doing the, the roofs and the portions of roofs that, that really need to be done at this point. So we've got Otten Road, this school right here, the entire building, we're replacing the roof. The middle school, the same thing, the entire building, the roof is being replaced. At the high school, we've got the 500 wing, uh, which is the most recent addition that's ready to be replaced. And at Woodfern and Woods Road, we've got the rear wings of both of those schools. Again, they're newer buildings, but those roofs are at the point that they need to be replaced. On the next slide, we switch over to uh, paving. Uh, and this is an issue that occurs at a lot of the buildings. Um, it's to the point where it, you know, it's a health and safety issue. Uh, you've got, you know, potential tripping hazards. You've got, you know, potholes that uh, visitors to the school driving may be swerving out of the way to avoid uh, that can create a potential problem. And, and then this is something that if you wait much longer, areas that could now just be milled and re-top coated at a less or of a cost would have to have a full depth replacement. Once you start seeing the gravel in some of these potholes, you know you've got to dig out that whole section, the full depth of the, not just the pavement, but the substrate, and you've got to rebuild that from the topsoil back up again. So projects like this, if they're delayed much longer, they get to be much more expensive. Um, so we've got a few slides of paving. Um, and again, this, this happens at virtually all the schools. The last slide on the, on the right, um, is actually triangle. It's, it's labeled triangle. It's actually the, the back of the middle school. I know you've done, a, like all the other, you know, systems, you've been doing things over the years. The front of the middle school was recently repaved, but we're doing the back, um, the back of that, the middle school. There's also drainage issues. Um, and I, I think there, you can see the catch basin there and the cracking there, which, you know, represents to me that there might be something below, you know, below the, uh, 
the drive there that is uh, um, having a problem. So we look at all the drainage issues associated. And whenever we're doing uh, pavement, we're looking at the, the curbing adjacent to the pavement and the sidewalks. Again, um, these are not just in the remote parts of the site, but some of the, these bad tripping conditions are at entrances to the building, they're at bus drop-offs and pickups, they're high traffic, foot traffic areas, so it's very important to take care of this. And again, the, we've got a second slide that um, just illustrates that. Combinations of drainage and um, um, uh, sidewalk uh, cracking issues. Uh, the next slide is air conditioning. And, and, and again, this is something that the district has been an ongoing um, uh, project that the, the, the school district has been tackling and it's been putting window units in the instructional spaces. What this uh, scope of work uh, covers is all the instructional spaces that are, are not currently air conditioned. And the reason it's a really good idea to include this in the referendum is because we can do a, a really good permanent solution to these uh, non-air conditioned spaces. Rather than putting window units in the windows, these are more centralized systems that are more energy efficient. They have better distribution. They can reduce the humidity, which reduces the chances of, of mold in the buildings. Um, these centralized systems are not as noisy, which is good for the instructional spaces. And you also don't lose window space. So you, you get all the, the natural light that's currently coming through the windows. And on top of all that, you get the state aid if we're including it in a referendum. Security. So I, I mentioned that there was an assessment done and one of the recommendations by uh, law enforcement was to have security vestibules at, at all the schools. So that's what this referendum includes. It includes a secure vestibule at the main entrance of every building. Within that secure vestibule, there will be a transaction window so that visitors um, can get buzzed into that vestibule but not allowed into the general corridors of the rest of the building without having first gone to that transaction window and produced identification and um, get approved to uh, uh, enter the rest of the building. So that's happening at every school. It includes uh, electronic hardware for buzzing the visitors in, it includes cameras, it includes uh, ballistic glazing for that vestibule, um, and also any other uh, you know, vulnerable areas around the, the first floor of the buildings. So the process and timeline, we uh, submitted all these projects to the Department of Education. We have approval, and again, the Department of Education deemed all of these um, eligible for state aid. Uh, that state uh, aid was accepted um, in, in terms of the amounts uh, through uh, preliminary eligible cost letters. So um, the, the board has really done all the paperwork necessary to, to have these projects eligible. And again, this, this state aid is only available if there is a successful referendum and the, and the board bonds for this work. Um, otherwise, you, you're going to be paying you know, full price for any of these projects. The date of the referendum is December 10th. We're hoping that it's successful referendum. We'll start work the very next day with uh, further field investigations, um, beginning with some geotechnical work out in the, the parking areas, some survey work. We'll be back up on the roofs getting more detailed information. We'd like to go out to bid with projects this spring and start work this summer, uh, tackling mostly you know, the, 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 the pavement and the sidewalks and roof work. Uh, and whatever else we can fit in for this summer and then complete the balance of the projects the following summer. We'd like to do as much work as possible during the summer months so that we're not disturbing or interfering with class and the students. And we also think it's a good idea to separate it and spread it out over two summers because we know you've got summer programs and that way they can be, you know, uh, relocated around the work that's being completed again so that those programs are not disturbed. The next slide, we've got a breakdown uh, based on the categories I just went through. So you can kind of see where the money's going. Um, uh, the roofing is probably the largest category. Uh, mechanical work and air conditioning are, are large categories as well. And um, site improvements, security vestibules. So it's just 
And there's further breakdown on the district website uh, by category, by building, um, and I, there's a lot of useful information out there. So I think I'm going to turn it over to Lisa Gorab, your bond counsel. She's going to talk about the financial aspects and the tax impact. Um, thank you. Good evening. Um, this is called a bond referendum because it authorizes the district to bond. Bond is just a fancy word for a loan. It allows the district to borrow the money to do the large capital projects. And the district, if the referendum passes, will borrow the money, bond the money, over a 20-year period. Um, the bonds, the loan that the district will uh, issue will be tax exempt, meaning that the people who buy the bonds don't pay interest on, don't pay taxes on the interest they earn. So the interest rate is lower than normal uh, corporate bonds. So the district's financial advisor has um, estimated what the tax impact will be for the referendum. And before I go into the specifics, I want to tell you what the assumptions are. First, that the board will borrow the money over 20 years. Second, that the interest rate would be 3.5%. Now, that's a very conservative interest rate. The uh, financial advisor uh, tells us that if we sold the bonds today, they'd probably sell for under 3%. So what the district is trying to do is, is be a little conservative in its estimate. The estimate also assumes that the assessed values in town will never go up. It's just another conservative estimate to be sure that whatever information the district is putting out about this tax impact is um, conservative. In addition, the average assessed home, not the market value, the assessed home, in uh, Hillsboro is approximately 350,000. So let me go over that tax impact with you. Currently, the district has debt outstanding, and currently, taxpayers in Hillsboro pay about a, that average assessed home pays about $139 a year to pay off those bonds. Those bonds are done being paid. They come off the books in 2022. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to structure the debt so that the new debt service, the new bond payments, kind of blend into the old bond payments so your taxes go up as little as possible. In fact, once we get past that 22-year, taxes actually to pay debt service go down. So in 20, let me just pull this in front of me because I'm having a hard time reading that. In, in 2021, based on your current debt service, the average assessed home pays $139. With the new bonds in the year 2021, that payment would go up to $179. It would go up $40. Then, from 2022 20, on, it would actually drop to $97 on the average assessed home. So with the old debt falling off and the new debt going on, from 2022 to 2041, there will actually be less taxes raised to pay off the debt than exists in 2020. So there is a bond payment. You are paying for it. It just happens to be less than what you're paying now for the old debt because it's falling off. Um, that is the average impact on a, an average assessed home in Hillsboro. In Millstone, um, since the Millstone taxpayers did not previously pay, uh, for the prior obligation, they're going to pay approximately $85 on an average assessed home at $319,000. Um, again, this impact um, is structured to minimize any increase in taxes. 
in one year, there's a $40 increase, but for the remaining uh, 16 years, 16 or 17 years, there's actually a decrease uh, in your taxes dedicated to debt service. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gorep, um, and thank you, Mr. Wozni. I appreciate that. We uh, we appreciate all your efforts. I know that there was a lot of work. Yes, Mrs. Gorep. I forgot something so important. I sure, think please. I just have been working so long. I am sorry. Probably the most important thing about this tax impact state is that the state contribution is really what kicks this down. I'm sorry. You should have okay. kicked me in the head okay. while I was standing here. Okay. okay. So. Probably the most important thing about this tax impact is the state has determined that the entire project, every aspect of it, is eligible for the highest level of aid. What does that mean? That means that the state wrote you a letter saying, we think these projects are important, we think they're needed, and we're committed to paying 40% of these projects. What does that mean? It means they've committed to pay 40% of the principal and interest every year. It means they're committed to pay 40% of your bond payment every year. So if you have a million dollar bond payment, the state says, okay, Hillsborough taxpayers, you raise 600,000 and we'll give you the remaining 400,000. And that's terrific. That's the great news. What the not so great news is that in the last 11 years, the state has funded that 40% aid at 34% not at 40%, because every year the state has a budget. For the past 11 years, they funded that 40% at 34%. So those, that tax impact that I, I gave you this evening is based on the state paying 34%. Could they increase it to 40%? Yes. What would that impact be? Your taxes would go down even more. Could they reduce it to lower than 34%? Yes, but they have not done that in the last 11 years. In fact, this is a new law since 2000, so it's been in place for um, 19 years. Uh, so for eight of those years, they funded it 40%. 11 years, they funded it at 34%. Um, in my experience in doing this for 30 years, I have never seen the state uh, drop the state uh, share lower than um, lower than the 34 percent. So um, I think it's a, also a conservative estimate for the district. Anything else I forgot? Thank you. No. Thank you. We were, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank Gora. You. We. Uh, that was part of my notes. That was definitely a, a key point that we were going to mention anyway. But thank you for that. And thank you, Mr. Wozni, for your presentation. We, um, the work that you folks have put into this is tremendous, and we appreciate that. We know that there's a lot of work that goes in. Um, looking at the PowerPoint presentation is wonderful, but the amount of time and effort that goes into developing this and getting into the, the details is uh, quite extensive. So I don't get the opportunity to have the mic, and when I do, um, it's, uh, I could be long-winded. But I'm not going to only thank our professionals. I'm going to thank our superintendent, our, uh, Dr. Antunes, because I know that, as President Haas said, she, um, in a very short period of time, uh, was given this task. And uh, it's been a pleasure to be by her side and to kind of work through this and to get into all these details. Uh, those that don't know Dr. Antunes, um, she's a perfectionist, and she is just about getting it right, being transparent, and her big ticket was she wants to make sure that the public is aware of all the details, that there's no, um, it's all transparent. And I do appreciate that as the business administrator, it's just, uh, it's a nice opportunity to work with somebody who's so detailed. Uh, and then our board, of course, thank you. As I said, when I get the mic, I don't, I don't shut up a lot. Um, <laughs> our board has, now, for those that don't know this out there, our board doesn't get paid. Um, they, this is an unpaid job. And the idea that they show up at meetings with us, that they came to, you know, to, to Cafe Brio with us, a couple of board members, that shows a lot about how they care about our system and the contributions that they make to those, to, to, to what they do. Uh, and we, I, like I said, I, I appreciate that. And it makes me um, just proud to be a part of this, this team. 
So I want to thank everybody for that. Uh, and now I want to talk a little bit, thank you uh, again, folks, but I want to talk a little bit about um, our frequently asked questions. Because on our website, we have a host of FAQs. I picked on the ones that I, and I may be redundant, and I apologize if I'm doing that, but my goal was to kind of pick on ones that are related to finance, um, because that's kind of what I do. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to talk about FAQ number 10 which says, when was the last time the district issued bonds for a referendum related to facility infrastructure? And the answer to that is the district has issued bonds for a referendum related to facility in, back in 2000. So we haven't done anything in terms of referendum like this until now we're putting something out there. So just an FYI. Um, also, frequently asked question number 14, and I think Mrs. Gorab answered this question, how long will the bond be in effect? The bond will be in effect for 20 years. It's a 20-year bond, um, and as she had mentioned, the key to this for us is the interest rates. That is that low interest rate is going to help us tremendously. Um, as far as the tax impact, I think Mrs. Gorab did a great job. I'm not going to go through that again unless somebody has questions when we open up the floor. We'd be happy to answer questions about the tax impact. What I do want to go over is the over what they call what we call the overlap year. Um, so that again, in the form of transparency, that everybody understands what that means. So if the referendum passes on December 10th, the new debt will replace the current existing debt. We all know that. Um, Hillsborough taxpayers will replace the $139 annually and will supplement an additional $40 only in 2021 22 um, with a new financial commitment after that of $97 annually beginning in 2022 and 2023 for an average home of 300, assessed at $350,000. Therefore, in 2021, the average taxpayer will continue to pay the $139 annually. In 21-22, the average taxpayer will pay the $179 annually. And in 2022-23, Estimated through the remainder of the life of the obligation, the average taxpayer will pay $97 annually. Um, this is a replacement, not in addition to. So beginning in 22 to 2022 and 2023, this would be a reduction in our debt service aid of approximately $42 per household for the Hillsborough Township taxpayer. Um, frequently asked question number 15, and I think, Mrs. Gorab, this is the one that I wanted to talk about state funding, and um, we would receive an estimated anywhere between 34 to 40 percent from the state, and I like to use the word, and I think a couple of board members mentioned the word, coupon. So it would be like a coupon that we receive from the state above our share. If the referendum does not pass, we do not get the coupon, we do not get the additional funding. Um, and that's really, in terms of summarizing it, uh, the referendum will repair, replace, and revive our schools while not increasing taxes, except for that overlap year. Um, the referendum takes advantage of low interest rates, and most importantly, the 40% um, coupon that we get from the state. Um, so that kind of summarizes the finances, and hopefully if, if board members um, have questions or the public, we'd be happy to answer any of those questions. But I think our board is extremely educated on the referendum and uh, the finance aspect of it as well. So, thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments? Just remind people to come. Do you have something else? Just want to remind people that we do have community meetings and facilities tours planned. Most of the facilities tours are aligned with the HSA meetings. And we're always adding things, although I think we're out almost every night for the next two weeks through thanks, up until Thanksgiving and then the week after Thanksgiving as well. But we'll fit you in if you want to talk, so that's not a problem. And then please go on and, and um, take a look at our website with any additional questions as well.